Sharks and rays have swum in our oceans for 400 million years and are a vital part of a healthy marine ecosystem. Sculpted by evolution, they are masters of their environment. Sharks are highly vulnerable to fishing because they are long-lived, late to mature, and bear few young. Only rarely dangerous to man, and usually due to mistaken identity, sharks have an undeserved reputation as killers. They are the ocean's top predators, like the jaguar is the king of the rainforest. However, the long reign of these magnificent animals is being threatened by the hand of man. Millions of sharks and rays are caught annually worldwide, principally with nets and long lines to feed an ever-increasing market. Many are captured in small-scale fisheries, but the vast majority feed the huge Asian fin market. What is driving the shark fishing globally? In the Christian world, shark meat is on the menu for the Lenten season as a purported white meat. In Asia, shark fin soup is a much prized delicacy and a status symbol. Markets are full of dried shark meat and fins, which sell for $100 a pound. Over 73 million sharks are killed yearly for the fin industry alone. Belize is no exception. The small country of Belize in Central America has the longest barrier reef in the Western Hemisphere and sharks play an important role in the reef's ecology and health. Like the jaguar's domain, the rainforest, the reef is a complex living system which relies on the health of its various parts for its survival. All the species in the sea have important roles to play. You can remove a few individuals in a population and not hurt the reef, but when you remove entire populations or species, the reef can no longer function properly. Predators keep populations of fish in balance. Remove sharks and other predators increase, impacting small fish populations. Herbivores such as the parrotfish and tangs are the tidy garbage men that keep the reef clean of sediment and algae. If they are missing, the reef rapidly becomes overgrown with algae, which smothers and kills existing corals and makes it difficult for new corals to grow. This adds to the damage and threats from climate change, sedimentation, pollution, coral bleaching, and ocean acidification. In Belize, sharks are rapidly being eliminated by artisanal and commercial fishing. As elsewhere in the world, they are being exploited for their meat and the Asian fin market. In hidden fishing camps throughout Belize, mostly Guatemalans with Belizean fishing licenses are gillnetting and longlining for sharks in huge quantities. Even baby sharks, known as pups and females with embryos, are not spared. The fillet is salted and stored wet in barrels. One barrel equals the meat of 100 to 300 sharks. 2,000 pounds a week is exported to co-ops in Guatemala with no benefits to Belize's economy. The fishery has been um, exploited significantly at a level far beyond the local resource capacity. It's certainly on the decline. This decline is leading to the loss of the bigger sharks, and fishermen are now forced to catch near sharks and rays, which are key species for Belize's marine tourism. We used to caught a lot of these sharks along the coast, and they're like all taken out by gillnets, mainly by Guatemalan, Belize and Guatemalan that is fishing here in Belize at the moment. That practice is very damaging. Not only does it take away our top predators, but there are many other creatures that get killed and die within the process. They have destroyed the area down south, and now they're moving up to damage the area 
up north? Almost every week you catch a hammerhead, sometimes a big reef shark. Those kind of fish are there, it's not anymore. Formerly abundant throughout Belize, sawfish have not been documented in years, indicating that these species are ecologically extinct in our waters. Something like about 20 years of back, I catch the last sawfish. They are done. In years, I've really seen a depletion in the shark. In like in 1995, I've, met, I've seen a lot of sharks, a lot more than now. But they're, they're very scarce. They're in terrible trouble. Used to abound in the reef, and now it's very difficult to find them, uh, which makes, of course, our research a little bit more difficult. What do we have left, and how many of them do we actually have? So that is some of the impetus for the current shark project that we are undertaking. We don't know much about shark behavior in general worldwide, and in Belize in particular, there's very, very little knowledge about what sharks are doing, where they're moving to, how they're utilizing the water column, and what this means in relation to a whole host of threats like fishing, um, and also conservation opportunities like marine protected areas. To uncover the mystery of a shark's daily life, Researchers use a variety of tag types to better understand sharks and rays, including the new daily diary tag, which records data on the three-dimensional movements, foraging behavior, and environmental preferences of sharks. Recovered tags provide a diary of the animal's life over several hours or days. Rachel has also been using acoustic tags which are implanted surgically inside the sharks to better identify sharks' favorite habitats, where they feed, grow up, seek protection from larger predators, and where they reproduce. Once they know what the sharks are doing, it will be easier to manage and protect them. In addition to a better understanding of shark behavior, Rachel's research has produced some disturbing data. How safe is it to eat sharks? They are found with testing the meat from landed sharks that 87% of all the samples were contaminated with very high levels of methyl mercury. It is incredibly bad for pregnant women, children, and even adults. Methyl mercury accumulates over time in muscles and the major organs of the body. It is a potent neurotoxin that causes neurological damage and even death in high doses. If we continue to eat mercury-laden fish, especially sharks, we are all poisoning ourselves. Sharks are worth a lot more alive than dead. Why? Tourism is the biggest GDP earner here in Belize, and marine tourism in particular is incredibly important, and sharks form a very strong component of that tourism. We will make money more to keep them alive than dead. It's better to see them in their element than on the table. A dead shark probably worth a couple, maybe a, a, a couple hundred bucks, and alive you could see that shark over and over again, especially if you take tourists to see the shark. Just to see a shark from the boat, they get so excited. I can take a long list of what one shark would bring in compared to one shark would give a commercial fisherman on a one-time seating. We're talking millions of dollars in comparison. At Holchan Marine Reserve and at Shark Ray Alley near San Pedro, sharks are the main attraction. Um, people visit Holchan is not only for the Holchan Channel, which is very popular, but also for Shark Ray Alley, just to get the chance to swim with the sharks. It's one of the things that um, stand out and people go back to tell their friends, oh, I swam with the sharks the highlight of their vacation a lot of times. It was really, really impressive. I mean, they're just very peaceful and you felt like you were like, you belonged there. I mean, they, they were just doing their business and they were just kind of looking at you, but it was really, really fun. But be right next to a, a, a shark was fantastic. It was, um, you just, you, this doesn't, you can't um, describe it. I first jumped into the water. It was just full of a lot of nurse sharks all over the ground and they were swimming around each other. So they're just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So swimming with them just amazes them and it gives them a greater appreciation for sharks in general. They're very important economically for the tourism and for the future tourism. And a lot of that money is used for education programs. 
We want people to keep having the opportunity to come back year after year to swim with the sharks. This is my fourth time in Belize. I've seen this type of sharks. I have several encounters with sharks and they are like, I mean, as long as you don't mess with them, they go on doing their own business. People end up leaving with a good impression and, and a very happy feeling about swimming with sharks. Nearby, Key Cocker has a similar attraction, but here there is a problem. No shark are being catch a lot by fishermen. Kikaka, there's literally no shark anymore just because they've been fished. The guys they caught with the sharks, they had about maybe 20, 30 sharks on board, which affects the park because these sharks move out to a certain area to go and meet. And when they go and meet, it's much easier. They're, they're in big schools. You get up to 20, 30, up to 40 of them in big schools mating. And that's what these guys do is they just put the, the gill nets around catch the sharks and then they would sell it to the restaurants as a, some type of filet. That cannot continue. You take away the mothers that produce the youngs, then you won't have any youngs, then you don't have any industry. You just put that whole cycle to a complete halt. Sharks are an exciting attraction at the Blue Hole and Lighthouse Reef. The sharks in a hole is very important for the tourist business because the tourists, they want to see the sharks. These are more great Caribbean reef sharks and they are very curious at points. They'll come around, have a look at us, move off, and people all get excited about this. I've seen one or two boats coming into by Lighthouse Reef, fishing the sharks with their nets, spears. In a whole, I think it's very bad and we need to protect the sharks. We have to put a stop on people killing these top predators. It cannot be continued to fish the way it is now, especially at the extent that it is being fished. It's just not sustainable. The Department of Fisheries needs to put some restrictions and some regulations on how the shark fishery will be managed. I believe that what is necessary in order to protect sharks and rays here in Belize is to have a ban on shark fishing altogether. Because once they, they take all the sharks, then what will we have left? Uh, just stop fish shark. I'm willing to stop killing the shark. We should stop the killing of the sharks. Shark fishing does not benefit Belize. Sharks are not safe to eat. Sharks are worth more alive than dead. Many sharks are a sign of a healthy and resilient reef. In 2009, the Republic of Palau banned shark fishing. In 2010, the Maldives banned shark fishing. In 2010, Honduras banned shark fishing. And in Belize, when will we do right by our sharks? These magnificent predators have been around for millions of years, but as they disappear at our hand, we need to ask ourselves, who is the predator now? So we have a choice, drive sharks and rays to extinction or help them to thrive so that our fish and our reefs survive for years to come and support our children and our children's children.